Good morning and welcome to our Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church. Uh, we've been on for a couple weeks now, we've been on the Holy Spirit as we've been looking at what the who the Holy Spirit is and what He does and all the signs of the Holy Spirit, the emblems, uh, the responsibilities. And we're getting into the ministries of the Holy Spirit now. It's a, there's a lot of things He does. This is a long study here in the ministry part of it. and So we'll be looking at some of the things that... Uh, it creates a little controversy now and then some folks look at things different than others and but we'll try to kind of go through and stay with the scripture and and just let the bible speak for itself but we're going to look at these uh ministries of the holy spirit and uh the bible has about 11 different ministries of the holy spirit that is assigned to him and and uh, we know that some folks have the idea we've talked about that the holy spirit was here in the old testament in the new testament so we're going to kind of start off with that thought a little bit um we know when we study the bible in uh, Genesis 1, 1, it says, In the beginning, a God created. And uh, we wonder then, we see in different places, like over in uh, uh, Psalm 19, 1, we see where uh, David says, The Father created all things. He says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. It's uh, Jehovah there, we look at the word God. However, John declares that the Son did it all. If you remember over in, in John chapter 1, and uh, verses 3 and 4 says, uh, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And in Him was life, and that life was the light of men. So that's over in John chapter 1. So we see that we see the Father, we see the Son, and then we have those uh, scriptures that uh, uh, kind of attribute creation to the Holy Spirit. So we're getting, we come to look at that, and we wonder then, what, who did it? Well, Again, over in Genesis 1, 1, what we see in the beginning, God created. The word God, uh, there is Elohim, and that it's in the plural. So when we talk about uh, uh, Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, it fits right in with Elohim uh, being a plural word there. So we know that then the Holy Spirit has a part in it. He did some of the work. We know that uh, He moved across the waters. We'll go ahead and let's see in, in um, Psalm 33, 6, it says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of His mouth. And then creating the earth, and the earth was without form. Here we go back over Genesis 1 2. And void and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Uh, that word uh, moved is only used one other time in, in the Old Testament and uh, well, in the Bible, actually, and it, uh, where Moses describes the gentle dealings of Israel as uh, the eagle. It talks, let's say it was over in um, Deuteronomy 32 11, it says, As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. And so it has the idea of, of a gentle fluttering motion over it. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. Sometimes we get the idea that He does come down wham and it just calmed everything down but he kind of he fluttered over it and uh, he brought the, uh, the word the world a lot of times the bible uses some translations say chaos there was no order and so he brought order to it so that was the the responsibility then of the holy spirit and then if we look over in uh, psalm 104 and then uh, verse 30 it says thou sendest forth thy spirit and they are created and thou renewest the face of the earth now, we're not going to go through uh, Psalm 104 all the way, but it talks in there about the creation of the trees, uh, the creation of the birds, the animals, the fish, and we get down to verse 30, then it talks about who did all that. Of course, we see the Holy Spirit at work in that creation. So, He created man, and Job talks about that over in 33, 4. He says, The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. So, as we look at especially as we look at these first parts, we see how the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and they're all a source of life. Everything they bring is in life and light and uh, things that are that are uh, permanent, eternal. And uh, we have the benefit of all that as we uh, put our faith and trust in Christ. And so we see then we're indwelled by that Holy Spirit and He done all of these things and we see the power of the Holy Spirit and, and how He worked. So another thing we want to look at is about the, his work in the scriptures. What did the Holy Spirit do about creating the scriptures, the Old Testament and the New Testament? Well, we see that the, the uh, Bible was uh, given to us uh, by God uh, through the Holy Spirit, and uh, it came in uh, three different ways. First of all, it was uh, by revelation, and that's when God uh, revealed, revealed his, his will, what he wanted people to know, what he wanted man to know. He revealed that uh, through the Holy Spirit to 40 different human writers. And through, the, through these 40 writers, the revelation of God was revealed, and then they wrote it all down. They recorded it. So that was the revelation. That's God coming to man. And the next thing we said, that was the inspiration. And that's when the Holy Spirit guided the, the pen 
of those authors. So they were inspired then to write the Word of God. And we see that went from the, the man into the paper. So we went from God to the man, and from man to the writers, and from the writers uh, to the paper. And then the last part of it we see then was the illumination. That's where the, the Holy Spirit uh, takes that Word of God and He illuminates us. He helps us to see and uh, understand what God has wanted us to know. And, uh, you know, I like that where every so often we'll see uh, uh, Paul especially talks about a mystery. And it's something that wasn't revealed earlier. So we see as the Scripture as we go through from Genesis all the way to Revelation. We see how God reveals different things at different times. And, and as, we, as we grow in the understanding and knowledge of Scripture through the power of the Word of God and the Holy Spirit of God, uh, we get such a benefit from that. We get the idea how to live how to have our life under control. So again, we see that, that work of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, we've talked about this before, but the idea is that it's such a, it's such a comforting thought, knowing that, uh, that the Son was here and He lived and He went to the cross and He died and He ascended back. But, but God just didn't stay out there removed from us. He sent that Holy Spirit uh, to come down here to earth and to dwell every believer uh, through the centuries now. And we you know that's been going on a couple thousand years now that the Holy Spirit's been here on earth and active in the life of the believers, indwelling the believers. So we see that he is the author of the Old Testament. He's the author of the New Testament. And we're going to look at some of those things. But we just want to I keep in mind this, what it's all about, how the Holy Spirit is actually working in my life and your life. And uh, that we have that comfort and that peace. And, you know, you get up in the morning and that Holy Spirit's there. You go to bed at night, that Holy Spirit's there. And he's with you all night long. So... Uh, right now, I see a lot of tr trouble in the world, a lot of trouble in people's lives, especially in the church and in our area. And so we, we look at all this and we, we can draw some comfort and some peace by knowing that we have that Holy Spirit. So he's, he's the author of the whole Old Testament. I'm going to read all four or five different portions of Scripture here. Uh, according to David, he says, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and His word was in my tongue. And we see God imparting his word to these different people. We see this in David. And then as uh, Isaiah speaks there in Isaiah 59, uh, 21, he says, As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord, my spirit that is upon thee and my words which I have put in thy mouth. Okay, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth and forever. So we see that uh, Isaiah and then Jeremiah, just in Jeremiah 1, 9, he says, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. So God gives these, pro gave these prophets here that we read about, he, he gave them the words to say. And, of course, as we preach and teach the Word today, we have the Word of God. So He gives us the Word. Now we talk about illumination. And we see the idea then that God illuminates our mind and our, our hearts to His Word so we can share it. I share with you and as you study the Scripture so you can understand better. So we see that God will put His Word in the, in the mouth of these men. According to Jesus, He said, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all is fulfilled. And so we see that uh, John says over in 1035, unto whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken. The power of the word of God. And the idea is that uh, God's word is true and there's no contradiction. There's no uh, nothing that's wrong about it. Whatever God addresses when we talk about uh, astrology, uh, when it, or astronomy, excuse me, when we talk about astronomy or we talk about uh, creation, we talk about geology, those things, whatever it is, whatever the Bible addresses is accurate. Uh, in fact, when we look in Job, we can see that the world was not flat. Those that would have studied Job back years ago, they would have seen that it, he says the world is hung by a ball, like a ball. And so he, the world, clear in Job, he understood that the world was not flat. So the idea is we get to the idea that uh, how this is all in the Old Testament, according to Peter, for this is the New Testament part of it now, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but the holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And then Paul closes it out here as we look at uh, 2 Timothy 3, 15 to 17. And he says here that, that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture, Genesis 1, 1, Revelation 21, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, which is, treating, which is uh, teaching, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God, the woman of God, may be perfect, complete, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So we see that uh, how the Holy Spirit worked in all those 
different people to bring the, the Word of God. So we're going to stop right there. Uh, the next thing we're going to look at is the author, Holy Spirit is the author of the New Testament, but we'll look at that tomorrow. So let's just close in prayer now. Heavenly Father, we just we do thank you for this day, Lord, and for this time we can uh, come to you before you, Lord, and bring your word, Lord. And we pray those that are, are watching and listening to this can uh, glean some, some knowledge from it, Lord, and some encouragement uh, knowing that you're with us and in us as, uh, children, as your children. So just be with us as we study. We pray that we bless you by all we say and do. And we just praise you for what you've done and what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen.